Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hey, welcome to our show on Rocking Robots. These are Legos, and we're going to talk today about how Legos have gone from this to something that moves, and you can tell it what to do. And with me today are a teacher from St. Andrew's Schools, Debbie Shintaku, and two of her students, and they will help to talk about how Legos have gone from this to robots. So welcome to the show. Thank you for Thank having you. us. Thanks. So I showed you this. Now, when I was a kid, this is what Legos were. And we were so excited when you had roof tiles. I don't know if any of you remember these. And then it went to having wheels. And we were even more excited when we had things like this, beams and axles and gears and things that connect this way. Now, this is, I think, what gives these new Legos so much ability to be built in different ways. So the Technics bricks are part of the Lego family. And if you get the robot, um, the EV3 kit, it comes with a bunch of these pieces. So you don't get a Lego robot right off the bat. You get a box full of stuff. So I'd like to invite the kids. Uh, maybe Maya, if you can start. Just tell us a little bit about what's in the box. Are there I mean, like connectors or beams? You can uh, stand up and, OK, no, OK. We'll set it down right there, and you can point at it. So in the box, you have everything you need to build the robot and some of the other gears, like axles and connectors. And there's also stuff you may use like beams and some gears. Yeah, okay. What's this thing? These are the wheels for the robot and the Lego EVC brick. Cool. And then do you, can you tell our viewers what are these? Just in general. Um, these are some of the motors and like sensors that you can use. Wow, so there are all these different pieces that come with the kit. Uh, what's this thing? This is the battery. Awesome. <laughs> and well, I guess it goes with the charger. Mm -hmm. OK, I guess that one right. So that, those are the pieces. Um, Aiden, would you like to tell us what that can be turned into? Don't move too far, but here. It can be turned into a robot of different variations. You can build it into different robots. This is one robot that we built. Wow. So it doesn't always have to look like that? Yeah, it doesn't always need to look like this. It can look like different things. It comes with some different models that you can put together, but you can even make your own. So it, you, you don't even have to stick with whatever they suggest. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's a big difference from, from this. I think that was one thing we wanted to, to talk about. So um, if you can have a, have a seat again, then we can talk about um, what this can do. So would you like to put, there's a button on top. Aiden, sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you can go ahead and wake it up. What is, so what does the red light mean? The red light, red light means it's, either turning on or turning off. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I think if we can take a look at some of the graphics that were okay. put together, maybe slide number uh, two next. So this is the kit and everything that it comes with, all the motors, the sensors, and, and all of that. And uh, oh, that's up. here. Do you want to show them the sensor? You want to tell them what some of these are? Okay. okay, so yeah, we're just going to move this out of the way. Okay, and um, I think the next graphic can talk about how. Okay, there's. Tell them what this is. 
This is the driving base where like it's powered from. It's kind of the standard model that, the basic model that you can put together. There are instructions that come with it, and so you follow it, it's very easy to follow. And uh, they put this, they put these together um, themselves just by following the instructions. Okay, so let me get this, the pieces out of the way, and we can go ahead and talk about what the programmers are interested in hearing. They hear robotics and they think, wow, there's, there's something that moves, right? Yeah, so how do you make it move, um, Maya? So on the robot, it should have like a small rectangular shaped screen and buttons on the side. The top and bottom are for move, choosing the program going up and down. And the two other arrows are for picking which like window you want to go to. Should we look at the slide that shows the programs on there? I think the next slide, Maya, maybe you can explain what these blocks are. Mm -hmm. These blocks are like ones that will show what is happening and what it's going to do. They're command blocks, so each mm -hmm. of those blocks tells it to do something. So what does the first block? The first block, if you hover over it, it's called... Um, move steering. Move steering. And if you click on it, under it, it should have like off on degrees, rotations, or seconds. And right now it's on rotation. So would you see this graphic on the EV3, or do you need a laptop computer to do this? You need a laptop. Oh, OK. So you have a bigger screen to work with. Yeah. OK, that's, that's good. I think if we go to the next slide, it has the actual what the screen looks like. So when you're programming, Maya, why don't you explain the screen? Mm -hmm. So on the top right is like somewhere where you can put all the like steps. And the first one is your name and the date. And the next two is moving forward through rotations and moving back through rotations. So what's a rotation? A ro what's rotating? Rotating is when the wheel on the robot moves like one rotation, one 360 degrees around. Aiden, maybe you can show us on the wheels how you know it's gone around one time. If you, there is little claw-like things on okay. the wheels, and if it goes from pointing straight up, and it goes around one turn, that will be how you know it's gone about three sixty degrees. Yeah. So. What's this other, what's this other? This thing? is the arm that it goes up and down. It cannot go 360, though, because that would be going through the robot. <laughs> yeah, that would not be a good idea. You want to run some of these, maybe the Move Forward program that we just saw? Okay, how far is it going to go? We don't want it to run off the table. Maybe we should it, go sideways. The move forward is going to go... That one? So maybe we can turn oh, it sideways. Oh, you said they don't want it moving. Maybe you should lift it up, and oh. then they can just watch the wheels move. This one? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it did exactly three mm -hmm. rotations forward and back. You can show them the arm one also, if you want. Maybe turn it sideways so they can see it go up and down. Oh, I saw that. So we did that this morning, and Maya noticed that it was going really fast, more up and down. So what was your, what did we do after that? So after. Before, we put it at 
power 50% and after we did half, so 25. Oh, so you can control the, the power, the speed of the uh, motor. Cool, so how many motors do you have on this robot? If I hold it. Um, Did Aiden answer that question? Sure. There are three motors, two to power these two bigger wheels. They're right here and here. The bigger sections are right here. And then there's one medium smaller motor. I'm not sure if you can oh, see I it, see. but it's oh, right here. Here. So is there a limit to how many motors you can put on that brick? Um, I don't think so, as long as you have enough motors. And a place and to slots. attach it to, yeah. yes. to hang it on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I notice each motor has something coming out of it, this cable, mm -hmm. and it plugs into one of those. The brick. Yeah. What are those called? Those. those are these cables? Yeah, they're cables connecting the motors to the brick. And on the laptop, some of them say like C and B for the move steering. And C and B are connected to these two wheels to like move it somewhere. And A is connected to the medium motor. Okay, so I noticed when it went um, the program said move forward and back, so you can make it go straight. Can it turn? Yes. I, Is that been. something you would program? Yes, I think we have a slide for that. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, we also have a program. Oh, here it is. So slide six, there we go. You want to explain that one, Maya? Yeah. This one is turning 50% to the right, which is a 90 degree turn. And it's going at 50% power, so not too fast. And one rotation. Okay, so it would move about four inches. Do we have permission from the uh, control room there to move for the robot to roll four inches? It's just going to turn to the right. Okay. Yeah. And one wheel will stay. Okay, I'll move that. I would get that. Stuff. Yeah, there we go. Hey, okay, cool. So you, you guys programmed that? Yes, we did. Yeah, awesome. So um, when you have a chance to put the programs um, together on the laptop, how do they get here to the actual robot? Oh, Aiden, go Aiden? ahead. There is a long cord. Oh, Can you right. show it? Yeah. All right. Cable. I think I saw the it. download cable. Yeah. It plugs into a one is a USB C area hole thing right here, and then the other side is and a then, USB. So it plugs into the robot, and then this is a USB cable what port thing it? that um, plugs into a laptop. Yeah, okay. So you program it and then you send and the command? And then you send the command to the robot and it downloads very quickly. And then you unplug it and you can test your program. Cool. So do you want to show some of the other programs? Oh, um, sure. We have some graphics. Okay. So this screen is what it looks like when you're on the computer, and oh, tell them what's at the bottom of the screen on the, the left side, Aiden, maybe you can explain those little. Those little blocks are, you, you tap on their, the commands that you send to the robot, basically, and you click on them and drag them up to that triangle block. Okay. And then you can press on those numbers to program however far or whichever way you want your robot to go. Okay, so a graphical um, way to do the programming. So you still have to figure out what the steps are and what each motor does. 
um, but you're telling it using this, this program. Now we're going to take a one minute break, so we'll be back. See you soon. Minasan, konnichiwa. Think Tech Hawaii ga Nihongo de Otodoke Suru. Konnichiwa Hawaii no Nihongo Hoso no Kosto, Kunisue Yukari des. Kakushu gets you be no Nijikara, Otodoke Stimas. Nihongo Community, Hawaii no Nihongo Community ni Bendi na Otaske Joho, News, Nado, Guest of Maneki Ste, Otodoke Suru, Bangumi des. Konnichiwa Hawaii, Kakushu no gets you be Nijikara. ぜひ皆さん見てください。ポストの国瀬ゆかりでした。アロハ。And aloha. My name is Calvin Griffin, the host of Hawaii in Uniform. And every Friday at 11 o'clock here on Think Tech Hawaii, we bring you the latest in what's happening within the military community. And we also invite all your response to things that's happening here. For those of you who haven't seen the program before, again, we invite your participation. We're here to give information, not disinformation. And we always Enjoy response from the public. But join us here, Hawaii in uniform, Fridays, 11 a.m., here on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hey, Stan, the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii. And they won't let me do political commentary, so I'm stuck doing energy stuff. But I really like energy stuff, so I'm going to keep on doing it. So join me every Friday on Stan, the Energy Man at lunchtime, at noon, on my lunch hour. We're going to talk about everything energy, especially if it begins with the word hydrogen. We're going to definitely be talking about it. We'll talk about how we can make Hawaii cleaner, how we can make the world a better place, just basically save the planet. Even Miss America can't even talk about stuff like that anymore. We got it nailed down here. So we'll see you on Friday at noon with Stan the Energy Man. Aloha. Aloha. I am Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green for Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 and I have really, really exciting guests on the exciting topic of energy efficiency. Hope to see you there. Aloha, my name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea. Law Across the Sea is on Think Tech Hawaii every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join me where my guests talk about law topics and ideas and music and Hawaiiana all across the sea from Hawaii and back again. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to our Robots Rock Show with St. Andrews School's teacher, Debbie Shintaku and two students, Maya and Aiden. Thanks again, guys, for being here. So we've been talking about the EV3 robot, which is built from Lego parts and programmed on a laptop computer. And after they figure out what they want the robot to do, they connect it via a cable, and the robot does it. So we've done forward and back. We've done a, a little bit of a turn, but it, does, it did a little more, right? Yes, there's another turn that they did. Uh, the, uh, another slide that you could, we could show, go to the next one. And um, Maya, can you explain what this one does? This one is a 180 turn to the left. And if you want it to go to the right, you do non-negative, and to the left is negative. So where does the robot end up? Maybe Aiden can show us what 180, at 180 degree turn would be. So they're selecting which program to run. And then they hit the start button. Oh. It turns half of a 360 spin. I'll run it again, and it should turn about a full 360. And that's what a 180 turn looks like. <laughs> Very good. So how about the next one? Okay. That went so well. Go ahead and show the next slide, please. Oh, Maya, you want to explain this one? This please. block is called a weight block. And it will wait a few seconds depending on how long you want on one of these choices. And for us, we chose just time. 
So there are a lot of other sensors. You can have it wait till the ultrasonic sensor senses something a certain distance away. We haven't gotten into that yet, but there's, there are a lot of different choices there on waiting and have a loop and doing different things, so. Wow, so you can tell it to go somewhere, wait a second. So if you push something really hard and it has to bounce before the next step, you calculate that in and just have it sit there, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool. So what else, um, what else do you have on here? Uh, let's see, what was the next slide there? So go ahead and go to the next slide. Oh, this is the, move, you asked about the arm. This is the moving arm up and down. So uh, let's see, what maybe Maya can explain that. So this one is the media motor and it will just turn to the right or the left. But if you have another gear and put it perpendicular to it, then it can make it turn up and down. So uh, notice what, what is controlling it. You mentioned about the motors earlier, about the ports to use. Which one do you use for the motor, uh, the medium motor? You use port A. Aiden, do you want to demonstrate that for us of where that is? Port A is right here. It may be blocked by some cables or my hand. And you just need to make sure that what when you're writing the program, what has to match? The um, the 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 ports have the letters, and it has to match on your program. If we look at that there's, slide um, again. Can we look at that slide that it says? Oh, I see the On letters. the top right corner, there's letters. So this medium motor, the cable connects to here, which is the motor. And it connects to port A, so. So will it work if your cable for the medium motor with this program was in port D? Would it no, work? no, because then it would, um, Nothing, not do anything. Since nothing is in port D. <laughs> or port A, you mean. Right, port A, as the program says port A. You're right. <laughs> okay. Um, do we want to demonstrate that one again? There's uh, another Oh, okay. The arm one? Okay, the arm one, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, and then <laughs> it waits. <laughs> two seconds, and then it does it again, just a bit slower. Oh. I think there was another slide on that that showed the slide actual. Slide 11. The pro oh, this is what the program looks like. Wow, so something it seems so simple actually has a, a lot of pieces yeah. to it. Oh, what are those blocks above the, those little boxes above the blocks, command blocks? What are they for? So those blocks above the program box are called comment boxes. So like if someone else is looking over your work or you forgot what you're doing, it's already up there typed so you know what you are going to do and what those blocks are going to do. Cool. All right. <laughs> so have we gone through the programs that you were ready to yes. demonstrate today? I, yes. That's okay. all that we have here today. So um, I wanted to ask a little bit about um, what you might be able to do with a robot that you can command. So Maya? something you can do with it is there's this first Lego League and there's like challenges that the robot needs to accomplish. And we're doing that this year. Cool. Um, do you know what the topic, um, the theme of the challenges are? I think it was into orbit for like problems in space. Yeah, exactly. So I would like to congratulate you all for being part of a team this mm -hmm. this year. It's your rookie year. Yes. The, the first year is always the hardest yes. um, because you have to learn the programming. Mm -hmm. You have to learn the building, putting all the pieces together. 
And then you have the project uh, researching some topic, and this year it's into orbit. Yeah. yeah. So the project is um, researching a problem that uh, they might encounter in space, and either physical or a uh, social problem. Um, so they've worked together and chosen a topic, which, um, by the way, this is our first uh, co-ed uh, team. Uh, that we, we've done, or activity that we've done. So uh, the boys and girls are working together. Usually they, they are separate in the schools uh, in, at St. Andrews. There's the prep for the boys and uh, priory for the girls. But um, in this venture, we are working together and learning to work as a team. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, so um, what do you have on the schedule for um, next week? Do you, do you know what the... Um, we have classes Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and sometimes Friday. You mean the team meets? Yeah, the oh, team, team meets. The team meetings. <laughs> Before yes. school and at lunch. Excellent. So yeah. I think we have only about a minute left. So okay. before we, we end, I just wanted to ask if there was one thing you wanted to leave with the audience. Maybe we can start with, um, with you, Vishen Taka. Well, that robots, there's a lot that you can do with robots. And uh, the, the age that uh, bringing it down the, uh, to fourth grade, and um, I think that's, uh, I previously have taught students that were like seventh or eighth grade. Um, and, but doing the same types of things, it's really amazing how uh, well they are learning, as was just demonstrated today. Yeah, yeah. thanks. Maya? Mm, I just think that LEGO Robotics is fun and very interesting. Great, thank you. Aiden? I think that you should have fun when doing robotics. OK. <laughs> yeah, I, th and I think that actually this adventure of coming to the, the studio and having green screen behind and then seeing, <laughs> seeing what it looks like when it's finally produced is Hopefully, hopefully kind of fun to add to your experience. Yes. And Very thank fun. you for watching and for sharing with us this journey on Robots Rock. Thank you.